and welcome to First Chapter Fridays. I'm Miss Karen, the Children's Librarian at the Oakmont Carnegie Library. Today I am downstairs in the lower level of the library. Usually I'm at my desk, so we have a little bit of a different venue. So we focused on a lot of things in April, and I wanted to mention another thing before we run out of April, and that's Autism Awareness Month. Um, and I am featuring the story, The Girl Who Thought in Pictures, the story of Dr. Temple Grandin. For those of you who don't know or are not familiar with Dr. Temple Grandin, she's a very amazing and talented, intelligent woman. And this is about a little bit about her experience growing up and kind of like what it's like from her perspective. If you've ever felt different, if you've ever been low, if you don't quite fit in, there's a name you should know. Temple Grandin's that name. In her tale, you'll find glory. So get ready, get set for this cowgirl's true story. In the city of Boston, one hot summer day, a sweet baby was born. It was Temple. Hooray! Unique from the start, an unusual girl. She loved spinning in circles and watching things twirl. But something she hated, like certain loud sounds or bright crowded places, large cities, and towns. Frilly dresses with tags made her itch, pull, and tug. Something else that she hated? A big squeezy hug. A shy loner, this temple, but when she got mad, when her feelings of stress and frustration got bad, quite a tantrum she'd throw, kick, holler, bang, shriek. Yet still by age three, not one word did she speak. She'll never be normal, is what some did say. Her brain's not quite right. You must send her away. Away? Not my temple, her mother proclaimed. We will figure this out. You should all be ashamed. Then, little by little, though sometimes she balked, special teachers helped Temple, and one day, she talked. And that thing with her brain, it was autism, see? She was different, not less. They all finally agreed. Like most kids her age, she loved ice cream and art. By the way Temple thought, that's what set her apart. If something was mentioned, for instance, a fly in her mind, she'd see dozens of photos buzz by. When time came for school, let's just say that was hard. Kids taunted and chased her all over the yard. They picked on poor Temple, how crazy it drove her. They teased her for saying things over and over. Look at her, and over and over and over. Until finally she snapped, yes she did, lost her cool, threw a book at a kid and was kicked out of school. No one really got Temple, but well then again, the truth that it was, Temple didn't get them. You need time away, said her mom. That's what's best. You'll go visit your aunt on a ranch way out west. And guess what? Fitting in on the farm was less stress, since the pigs didn't care if her hair was a mess. Quite a sweet spot she had for the cows in their herds, such big gentle beasts who knew nothing of words. As she watched her new friends and thought pops in her head, these cows think like me in pictures instead. At a new school that fall, Temple found more support. And a teacher who taught her, you'll never fall short. When you'll find what you're good at, like science, you'll soar. And that teacher was right. He had opened a door. So she built a machine like she'd seen on some farms, an invention that hugged her with boards, but not arms. It worked. She had done it. From memory, it's true. And just like the cows, it made Temple calm, too. I'm special, she thought, like a bright shooting star. My attention to details could help me go far. Though her studies, she learned, there were farms not so kind. I will help them, she said. Some solutions, she find. And then something cool, can you guess? Could it be? Off to college, she went. A degree, she earned three. And though ladies weren't experts on farms at that time, do you think that stopped Temple? No way. She did fine. She stepped through the door and went forward, no tears. She took on the world, but at times she had fears because some things were scary like people she'd meet who'd ignore her ideas and, well, wouldn't be sweet. But she never gave up, learned her stuff through and through, like why cattle will circle and what makes them moo. To build better farms was her goal. She would do it. Be kind to our creatures. They have feelings. She knew it. And slowly but surely, she changed many minds until farm after farm built her awesome designs. Word spread about Temple, her feet's not so small. Temple Grandin, she's grand. She's the grandest of all. 
Now, for these things and more, she's won honors and prizes, and a movie was made, and the biggest surprise is that girl with a future that couldn't be bleaker? Yes, that once silent girl, she is now a big speaker. Today, she spends, spreads hope with her stories and speeches from New York to Sydney to Rome, Temple teaches. Each person is special, so unique are our minds. This world needs your ideas. It takes brains of all kinds. So here is the lesson. Feeling odd or offbeat, being different might just be what makes you so neat. Don't let doubt hold you back, not for one minute more. Stand tall, just like Temple. March right through that door. And we have a note from Temple that says, Dear reader, as a child, I was really glad that my mother always encouraged my ability in art. I encourage you find something that you are good at and work at developing it. If you are interested in becoming a scientist like me, find cool new ways to look at things such as microscopes and telescopes. Explore nature. Think up your own hands on some think up your own hands on science experiments. Keep learning, especially from your mistakes. Fun facts and tidbits are back here from the author's chat with Temple. And here's a timeline of Temple's life so far. This is an amazing book, uh, and here's all some information about Dr. Temple Grandin. For those of you that want to check out this book, it's available on our shelves. It's also available in the county. Go on to our catalog at oakmontlibrary.org, or come on in. We're open. I wanted to mention that I did meet Temple Grandin in person when she came out with her Think Thinking in Pictures book in 1995. Um, I was living in Maine at the time, and she was touring. I just signed up for an eight-hour seminar and listened to her lecture. It was the fastest uh, eight hours I've ever spent because she is such a fascinating speaker, somebody that's very riveting to listen to. Um, she's amazing. I can't stress it enough. It is, uh, like we said, April is Autism Awareness Month. Here are some famous people with autism. And here's some information. It was once synonymous to be seen with an intellectual disability or at least with low-functioning individuals. Nothing can be further from the truth. In fact, many individuals with a certain degree of autism are, have incredibly high IQs and are extraordinarily function, functioning, functional. Uh, Steven Spielberg is thought to be on the spectrum, and Woody Allen, Bob Dylan, Bill Gates, Al Gore. You can see the list down here. Some of these people have made some tremendous uh, advances in science, technology, math. So there is some food for thought about Autism Awareness Month. Thank you for joining us for another First Chapter Fridays, and I will see you next week.